Hello, my name's Colin Campbell. I'm with Polygon. We're here at GDC and we're going to be playing a really interesting looking game. I'm with Felix here, who's come all the way from Vienna. He's with a uh, developer called Broken Rules. And they're going to be showing us a game called Old Man's Journey. I've seen a little bit of video footage and I like it so Thank far. You. So um, uh, why don't we start playing and you, you just give us a sense of what the game's about. Yeah, Old Man's Journey is um, it's a soul-searching puzzle adventure game. It's slow-paced, narrative-driven, um, and um, it's basically you travel with this old man, and while traveling, you learn his life story. You see, and that's what you do when you travel, right? You get to know someone, and that's what you do while playing that. You get to know the important moments of the old man's life. So is it kind of uh, a journey through his history as well as a journey through physical spaces? Yes, you could say so. So basically, he will soon start his journey and while on this journey, he reflects on his life. Oh, nice. And, wh and what is it about him? You know, here he is, he looks like a character who lives on his own, yeah. maybe a tiny little bit sad. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is it about him that we can expect to find out? I mean, obviously, it's difficult to answer that, but I mean, <laughs> has he had a rich life or has he had a sad life or, you know? Yeah, well, I'm, I don't want to uh, tell too much detail about the story. Obviously, it's a simple story, I can say that. And at its core, it's about family. Um, it's basically about, um, how do you say, like balancing personal fulfillment, individual passion and family life. Um, so he had a difficult life. <laughs> and some of his decisions were not always uh, the best, I would say, but um, that makes it obviously also more interesting to tell the story. Um, I don't know, the backpacks and, and uh, the, the, the sort of hills, it has a, a sort of a central European feel to it, Does it is that, is that yeah. just me? No, it's uh, actually on purpose, so I mean we are based in Vienna, Austria, so <clears throat> we wanted to be inspired as well from the place we're rooted in, basically, because we think that's when we can, I don't know, that's the strongest inspiration we can pull off because we know it best. Um, and it definitely has this kind of like touristy uh, view on Europe, I'd say. It's like, it's not a real European place. Also now here, what we see here now is uh, like a memory of, of him of his old man's, uh, of the old man's life. Um, and that's also how the story will be presented to it. It's always these vignettes, basically, that are kind of like static images. Well, they're not static, but they're like a frozen shot in time and just slightly moving around. He's wearing a naval uniform. I is, is his history entwined with real history at all? Or is that, that not part of the story? It's important that he's wearing his navy uniform. Right. Yeah, he's actually, well, you can see it maybe on the logo, which has a bit of a, it's, we also have these tattoos. You probably can't see them. Temporary tattoos we give out at GDC. But he's a sailor, and that's an important part. Of okay, it, yeah. so let's talk about the mechanics now, because what, 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 what I saw briefly there was a sort of platform-ish mechanic in which you're controlling the platforms rather than the character. Yeah, it's interesting that it, it's, it has a little bit of platformy sense to it, I guess, but it definitely is not a platformer. Um, but um, so what you do is you tap to uh, tell the old man where to go, and, but you can also shape the landscape. You kind of like grow the landscape to um, develop a path for the old man. Um, and that's where like the puzzly part comes in, but I do puzzly with, uh, how do you say, how do you call those? Scare quotes. Scare quotes, okay. Quotes. Yeah. <laughs> quotes, yeah. Because um, like our, ooh, I see a bug already. <clears throat> well, nobody sees him, because, uh, but me, probably. <laughs> um, we, uh, our goal for the puzzles was to always be pressure free. Um, so it's not a challenging game. Right. But our goal was to be, to always have interesting um, puzzles or situations that um, encourage people to interact with, with the world. I've played a lot of games recently, and there are a lot of them certainly coming out, in which you're really not challenged that much to do anything other than what a person with basic common sense would do. 
Uh, it doesn't really require that much in the in the, in the way of video game literacy. Yeah. And I and I, and I think that that's really interesting because the the focus is really on the characters and on the story and on the sort of emotions, the the emotional life of the characters as well. And that's obviously what you've been going for here, rather than you know brain boggling puzzles. Yeah. So definitely the experience is like more important than the gaminess, right. I, I would say. And you're totally right about that. Um, and our goal is also to try to reach out a bit outside of the gaming or gamer bubble, we could say, like to reach also people that don't play as much. The interesting part is that um, obviously if we let people play that don't play much, you still notice that if you have game liter literacy, you're, it's way easier to, to navigate these spaces because we're just so used to navigating um, spaces and reading landscapes, right? Like lots of people that don't play much still need more help to read where they can walk and where the intersections are and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, there's a point and clicky aspect to it. And you, you know, obviously you light up certain areas uh, for us to the sort of advent calendar thing going on. Yeah, it, it has a certain point and clicky thing for the, basically for, how do you say, for like, interacting with yeah. the world but they're not part of the challenge or of the puzzle and stuff like that do they open up sort of aspects of the story though I'm presuming that, that, that happens actually as well. not I think they're more for in, uh, for putting players into the world right. more to like draw them into the world so a goal for us always was to build uh, landscapes or or environments that people just want to spend time in and enjoy um, that, that hill looks like a bit of hard work for him. I yeah, that's that a high hill. Um, but the, the colours are interesting. The, the colour palette, you, you know, you talked about how you're inspired by sort of a pretty version of Central Europe. Is that where you're getting these colours from as well? Yeah, so it's basically a mixture of Mediterranean places, um, Italian towns or all the French towns. Um, and <clears throat> these colours, like for this scene, are actually inspired by a place called Sancterre. Oh God, it's Italian. I probably can't <laughs> pronounce it. Um, th those who are from Italy will probably know how to pronounce it. Um, but it, there's, it's a really colorful town. Um, if you Google that, it, that image almost immediately pops up. Is it a coastal town? It's a coastal town. I think I've seen that image. Yeah, actually. you've probably seen it. It's funny because I, w I was at a Dice last week and uh, I was watching the Overwatch presentation. Yeah. And one of their levels is... It's Mediterranean? It's med well, it's supposed to be Mexican. Okay. But, but it's actually this Italian town that they found on Google. Okay, yeah. And the hotel is a hotel in some French small town, uh, obviously a bit um, altered. But we get these inspirations from real places, um, which we find on Google Image or on Google Earth, basically. Right. Which is, re I don't know, I mean, it sounds a bit stupid, but it's really nice to be able to get these inspirations from your desk basically without a actually having to go there obviously the feeling is different i don't know i think i'd quite like to go there yeah but yeah i know what you mean it is good that it's thank good. god for the internet yeah yeah i do say thank god for the internet but um we obviously we've been to italy we've been to france so we also know how these places feel like so i think it's it's easier that you can just see pictures and kind of like draw these wi wipes in and mix them together right now let's do the the sort of boring stuff when is when tell me about when this is coming out and what platforms it's coming out on um this is coming out sometime spring 2017 so we'll we still don't know um, the exact date but it will be soonish <laughs> um and we're aiming for mobile and pc um, we also don't know exact all platforms, but um, I'm guessing I iOS, Android, Mac and Windows. And more details will be announced soon um, from, uh, on our, our Twitter feeds and stuff like that. Would you ever think about putting it on console or is it just not the right we were thi we are We were thinking about it. We will be thinking about it. Right now I'm not focusing on it because I'm really trying to make it work best for uh, the launch platforms um, <coughs> and um, that difficult part is that it's pointer based right you need some kind of pointer to really play it so yeah. I don't know how to play it with a gamepad yeah. yet uh, obviously there are ways like uh, 
controlling a pointer with your stick, but that's not very elegant. So we will try to look into that after we finish that. We're pretty busy right now wrapping this thing up and getting it working on, on the, the launch platforms. What, what have you worked on in the past? Broken Rules uh, has been around since 2009. Our first game is called And Yet It Moves. Uh, it was a puzzle platformer. Was actually also part of IGF, but Student Showcase back in 2007. Oh, right. So it's kind of nice to be, oh, yeah, development console. It, cr it crashed, didn't but it? But it didn't. Yeah. Oh, wow, it, wow. Just, it just put out some errors. Um, so it's kind of like a 10 year anniversary for us to be in the IGF, which wow. is really nice. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And after And Yet It Moves, we worked on a Wii U launch title called Chasing Aurora. And after that, on a PC game called Secrets of Reticon. Both of those were uh, based in the Alps, so Alpine mountainous regions with flying, where you were f f flying, a f controlling a flying bird. Um, <coughs> and we've also done a small iPad game, but it was more of a jam project, basically. So this is our first real mobile game, um, but I felt like for this for this concept and this project mobile really felt like the perfect place to be in both from the control and input wise but also from the way to experience this uh, I think the best place to experience Old Man's Journey is like on your favorite reading spot it's it's a very intimate slow thing so kind of like in the evening sitting down getting a cup of tea stuff like that and take time to relax and feel something yeah I, I think I think that's a good point is is that a lot of these games do have a, a sort of novel ish feel to them they, they, they feel like um, I was playing Heralds which is just out recently uh, and that's made in Europe as well it's yeah. a Dutch team Heralds and yeah it's, it's set on a, a 19th century ship and it's about uh, it's about sort of racism and oppression and all that stuff and it's Really, really feels like sitting down in a quiet corner of your house and yeah. playing a novel, and this has that sense as uh, as well. Even though they're, in terms of their mechanics, they're very different games. But in terms of the experience, yeah, right? in terms of the experience, it's just sort of like I fancy a quiet half an hour just on my own. Yeah, and it, that's it, how that's how you feel when you read a book, right? Exactly. It's also like um, Old Man's Journey is definitely more of a compact, uh, very focused experience. But like you said. I mean, I'm, I'm, I have three children now, and I'm, I develop games during the during days, so I'm kind of like, it's hard for me to play these long 40 hours games anymore, or 100 hours or whatever, and I really long for this experience that I can just experience at home when the kids sleep, and I just crash on the couch for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and be somewhere relaxed. <laughs> Um, and stuff like that, and I think that there's more, I kind of call them the grown-up gamers, I don't know if that's really a good t term, but I think there's more and more people that are in a life position or in a, in a point of their life where they don't have as much time anymore for playing as they used to. No, I think that's certainly true, and I also think that uh, as, well, as well as sort of sitting on your own and playing games, it's also nice to sit and play a game with, with the kids around, like, yeah. like you're watching a family movie or whatever, and they, they, you know, they like click on that, click on this, and you, you, know, you can't sort of play Prey yeah. or, or Resident Evil like that. So it's nice to find these games where, where and, the ki and, it, and because there's sort of fairly light interaction, the kids aren't all over you going, let me have a go on it, let me have a go on it, because it's, sort of, it's, it's a story as well as a, a game. Yeah, I think actually, especially the first levels we have work really well also for playing with your kids. Um, so they work kind of as a toy as well. Like you can touch stuff like the fisherman or stuff like that. And that works for, for I think, for kids very well. Um, but then again, I think as a, as a parent or as a grown-up, you also have something to take with you while watching them rather than with a lot of kids' toy toy apps, which are sometimes really great, right. but you don't get much by watching your kids no. playing them. So I do hope that there's also for uh, families a uh, mutual experience that works for both for kids and parents. Give us a sense of how long the game takes from start to finish. Well, we don't know for sure, but I think it will be 90 to 120 minutes, something like that. So it really, 
um, which makes me a bit scared sometimes for PC, but I think for mobile it's a very, very well, very good length. Why does it make you scared for PC? I feel like PC players um, de often demand more. I mean, I also do think that it's kind of a good, how do you say, um, if, if they say, oh, the game was too short, it's like it means it was a good game, in a, in a sense. Um, but um, I, I think that players on PC are used to longer games. Did you guys do all the art yourselves in-house? Yeah, so um, the creative director is my colleague Clemens, um, and he does all, all the in-game <coughs> art together with uh, another full-time artist called Brian. Um, but the memories that we just saw are actually from a studio, from a Viennese studio um, that is called Salon Alpine, and they come more from an advertisement background. So their expertise really lies in, I call it visual narrative, in a sense. But they've been, like we've had a, we've had a, Clemens and I had a rough idea of what his life story is going to be and what the key moments are. Um, but Salona Alpine really helped shape what we can tell in single frame pictures. Right. Like what can we convey of it, what works and what doesn't what stereotypes you need to use because if you only have one picture you have to use what people have in their minds already and well, that was really helpful yeah yeah you, it, that is interesting that there's a different skill set involved in creating these sort of landscapes of of movement as opposed to these kind of postcards which tell a story as well and yeah like lip who's like the main artist for the memories he would be really bad at this at doing visual levels because he's way too noisy and way too like there's way too much going on and Clemens really knows how to keep readability alive which is important because you need to know what, where, where intersections are, where the old man can walk and still convey these great landscapes. Like for us it's re always really important to have believable landscapes in, in the levels. So the way it works is that we first have prototype, like kind of like puzzle prototypes and then we combine them and say, okay, we want this first because this teaches this skill set and then this, and those are all gray, grayscale landscapes, minimal, basically. And then Clemens goes around and says, okay, we, this hill works, but this will, this doesn't make ad sense at all in the landscape and how can we connect these? Um, and I think that's also a, an important part in um, giving the players a uh, feel for the landscape and the place, a space they really are inside in and want to be in. And how, you, how did you do the art? Was any of it like hand-drawn? It's all hand-drawn. Oh, wow, fantastic. Yeah. And what about the painting, the, the colours? They're also hand-drawn. Wow, that's... So they're hand-drawn, you mean the memories? No, no, these. The oh, yeah, yeah, these colours. Yeah, these all, it's, it's all hand-drawn. So basically, it's a very handcrafted game, like, um, which is kind of annoying sometimes, but I think it's also part of the quality of, of it. Um, but we seldom reuse a texture for a cliff, um, sometimes one or two in a level, but for most levels we really needed to um, create fresh textures all the time. And basically the way it works is um, that uh, Clemens, um, do you know where to go to, Joseph? No, you have to go. <laughs> um, Clement sets up sketches for the for the hills uh, for the textures, and then Brian, our other artist, basically renders them. But they are definitely hand drawn. There's no lighting in in game. And you obviously made a decision. Well, I'm, I'm assuming here you've made a decision not to use any kind of dialogue or yes. text at all. The whole thing is visual. Yes, um, we want this to be kind of so. This Oldman's Journey is really very much an emotional game, and <coughs> we want to connect with people on this emotional level. Um, and we do think the text adds an abstraction layer there that um, is sometimes in a way for that. Uh, like you, it works for a lot of experiences, obviously like books and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but we think that for our medium, and the, the, for ex especially for the project that we wanted to have here, as this, we wanted it to be kind of like going directly to an emotional level or kind of like more primal you could say I don't know but we, we wanted to get rid of some abstraction layer uh, we also wanted to get rid of having people that people have to read stuff because I just think that 
Yeah, I mean, it's also a personal subjective thing, but we don't really like reading uh, in games that much. And voice acting was is, is expensive, first of all, um, but it's also, then you need to localize it and all that stuff. Right. I, 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 that was a very early on decision that we don't have any text or, or dialogue uh, in there. No, no, and I think that if, you're, if you've got a story that is fundamentally visual, then uh, it, a lack of a lack of voice can can actually enhance it. Yeah, it's also like a story that's really not that complex. Right. Um, so we consciously decided for that to be simple enough that we can actually tell it through uh, and our our how do you say our tool set. Exactly. Right. Um, we've also. Uh, consciously decided on hand drawing and having this kind of it's like although there is depth in the levels because the levels are actually built in 3D but like the layers itself are very flat there's not that much perspective in there and that's also to get this kind of like warm feeling of I don't know like touristy paintings maybe but right. I think it's something that connects also on a level with 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 people that are not players as well, right? It's something that even your parents can connect to from a visual standpoint. Um, it's, it's a visual language that I think has a wider audience than um, other, other um, like we experimented with, experimented with 3D as well, like having houses 3D, having all this 3D. Some objects are still 3D. You see the walls in there are actually 3D. Right. Um, but um, yeah, it didn't feel right in the end. It was like a stomach decision, how do you say, gut, gut feeling decision to go for straight to the um, hand drawn, warm, uh, handcrafted uh, look. Now, while you've been making the game, have you been playing other narrative games for your own amusement or to get tips and things? Yeah, we've been playing, like, I mean, I don't play, like, uh, like I said, I don't play that much anymore, but there's obvious uh, inspirations for that, and it's, <clears throat> um, obviously Monument Valley is an inspiration from the experience side, um, not so much from the narrative side as well, I guess, but um, then I really like to see Mogo games that do a lot with, uh, also with uh, story and narrative, but um, also Firewatch, um, I've been playing, I think, pretty much at the start of this project, or uh, at least at the start of development, I've been playing Firewatch, and I think they, they well, they do a, a lot of things really, really well, um, from, from, uh... Yeah, it's been out a year now, hasn't it, Firewatch? Yeah. So, real development started around October 2015 for right. Oldman's Journey, and the concept phase was a lot longer before, but, um, we took some time to get funding for it. Um, it's funded by IndieFund. Okay. Part, of Indie Fund, uh, part of it is IndieFund and the other part is a public grant from the city of Vienna. Um, and to get this, this funding was really helpful for us to refine the concept and the vision. And we kind of used that uh, as a, in the, during the concept phase to really, um, to know what we really want to build. That was pretty helpful. So where are we at in this demo now? Um, this is the last, uh, that's almost uh, almost finished. This is the last level. Um, this is actually, al as you can also see, um, yeah, I think you can walk into the windmill. This, as you can see, this level is also a bit more, like, it's a bit more sad or a bit more dark. Right. Um, but that's also what we've always, we've, we have this emotional progression curve that is based on on his life, but it's also something that we want to evoke in, in, in players, or that we want players to em feel empathy with that. So we try all aspects of the game to support this emotion, emotional progression. Um, uh, so, like obvious tools like rain and, and lighting, right? It's, it's simple, but I think these are the things that really work to um, support this and we tried that the gameplay supports this emotional progression. We tried the visuals and obviously the music and the uh, uh, sound effects as well. Yeah. Okay, well, look, thanks very much for coming along. Really enjoyed seeing it. Yeah, and thanks uh, for having it's us. Out, it's out later on this year, maybe in the spring. 
Yes, maybe in the spring. Yeah. Yeah, we'll wait for that. Look forward to that. Thanks yeah. very much. Thank you.